Hello friends, today we'll discuss in brief on Plumeria or the Champa plant, its types, important care tips and propagation of uh, Plumeria from cuttings with results. Stay tuned. If you are a hobby gardener or interested in growing plants, consider subscribing to this channel. Also turn on the notification bell icon and you won't miss anything. Plumeria are milky sap plants and consist of a lot of species and all belong to Apocynaceae family. For example, Plumeria pudica, Plumeria alba, Plumeria obtusa and many others. The various species differ in their leaf shape and leaf arrangement and also the color of their flowers. There are many common names for this plant like the champa, the nag champa, pigeon nut, caterpillar tree, etc. You are seeing here two different species of Plumeria. This one is Plumeria obtusa with white flowers that is called white champa. The other one is Plumeria pudica commonly known as nag champa here. Perhaps because of its leaf shape which resembles the hood of a cobra snake. Well now moving on to the care tips of uh, Plumeria plants. Whatever is the species, these are the common care tips for all Plumerias. With the proper plant care, these wonderful tropical plants can live for many years in containers. They can grow very tall when grown in ground soil. The first factor is watering requirement. Plumerias like a lot of water during their active growing season like in spring and summer but be careful with overwatering because this can lead to root rot and kill the plant so the best method is dip your finger into the soil to about one inch and then if it's dry then only water the plant but when you're watering water it thoroughly this depends on your climatic zone and the season and also whether you have kept it in full sun or not maybe you need to water it daily or alternate days depending on your climate one important point to remember is use clay pots and not plastic pots if you're keeping it the plant in full direct sunlight so the next factor is sunlight for best flowering keep it in full direct sunlight and maximum sunlight if possible or at least four to six hours of sunlight is required for flowering and depending on your climatic zone some regions might have to shift this uh, indoors especially in winter season where they go into dormancy that is the dormant period of the, some plants then the next factor is soil if you're repotting the plant consider a best potting mix for this so that the care becomes easier later on and it gives maximum flowering first requirement is a well draining soil that should drain out water easily from the soil also check the drainage holes of your pot and if it's blocked use a screwdriver and any tool and poke it or release uh, the clogged stuff from the hole General potting soil like my universal potting mix will be very good for the plant. You can check this video on universal potting mix from a card linked at top right corner of this video. Then the next factor is fertilizer. Remember plumerias are heavy feeders and growing plumerias in pots will definitely require fertilizer application for blooming. So most of the time a potted plumeria will not bloom without fertilizers fertilizers once every 15 days to one month especially in spring and summer season can provide give you the best results you can add anything like one handful of vermicompost or even one handful of decomposed cow dung powder npk crystals some 5 to 10 crystals or even water soluble npk 1919 powder then bone meal about one to two teaspoons every two months because it's a slow release fertilizer and very good for flowering then you can also use compost tea this is also a good option then what i use is my cocktail universal mixed fertilizer powder about about one tablespoon into this large pot once every 15 days and make sure you're tilling or raking that is loosening the top one inch of the soil before applying the fertilizers if you have not seen my video on how to make this uh, uh, mixed fertilizer recipe, uh, check out my video from a card link at top right corner of this video or you can check the channel homepage at youtube.com slash garden tips. Then the next factor is pest control. Very rarely they are attacked by white flies and spider mites. You can use neem oil spray when attacked or best is to spray a dilute solution of neem oil once every month for all your plants just 5 ml neem oil in 
one liter of water plus half teaspoon or about 10 drops of liquid soap like a dishwash uh, liquid uh, soap for surfactant effect and also the coating effect you can find a detailed video on neem oil in gardening from my playlist then the next factor is pruning pruning from time to time promotes good growth by branching and hence more flowers best idea is to prune bit by bit like once a bunch of flowering happens on a branch and then the flowers dry out you can prune that branch or its twig it's called deadheading which promotes more growth and more flowering then lastly on propagation these are really easy to propagate from cuttings the only point you need to remember is they are milky sap plants be little careful with the milk it can be a skin irritant to some people the cutting should be dried for two to three days to form a callus that is at the cut end and then you can insert it into the soil similar to succulent propagation the cuttings root very easily but sometimes rooting can be very late but uh, but do not discard this sometimes it can take months before showing signs of rooting or uh, shooting as you can see in my case and you can take any size cutting and the success rate is really good so there we have it folks if you like the video please like share and comment below the video and give some feedback so consider subscribing to the channel if you are new to the channel with the notification bell icon pressed happy gardening